Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Dom and today we're going to be building a wallpaper generator using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now this requires no libraries or frameworks. It is all going to be done using pure JavaScript and we're going to be utilizing um, the HTML5 canvas in order to build this right here. So we can see that um, we have options to input a width and a height with a default to 1920 by 1080. And I've also got a linear start color and a linear end color. So this here refers to the gradients in the background here. So it's going to run from the top left to the bottom right, starting from the light blue to the dark blue, as we can sort of see behind the purple radial. So that purple radial color refers to, of course, our little uh, circle here. And then you simply press generate wallpaper and it's going to move that, um, that radial around because I'm not actually changing the colors here. But if I was to change colors, for example, something like a yellow instead and press generate, it's going to, of course, change the color. So we can see here that is how this... A uh, little project is going to work and it's actually quite easily done. So moving into uh, this tab right here, let's begin from scratch to create what I just showed you. So going inside VS Code, we can see I've got this index HTML with a linked JavaScript file. So all of the source code for this is going to be linked down below if you would like to reference it while you watch today's video. But we can see that the linked JavaScript file also has the defer attribute. This ensures that it is going to load asynchronously with the rest of the page, but also importantly, only executed once the document has been loaded up. So you can avoid errors like element not found. We've also got an empty style tag, which of course we're gonna be populating very soon. But for now, let's head inside the HTML body and of course begin with the HTML. So for this particular project here, let's begin by simply creating a new canvas element with a class of wallpaper. So this here is going to be the main um, black square that we saw um, right here in the example. So going back inside the HTML here and going inside the style tag, let's add some CSS to say wallpaper, then say a border of five pixels solid and then uh, black just like that and also a width of 500 pixels now this width here is only the css width so if you set 1920 by 1080 as your wallpaper size that is still going to be uh you know counted so you are going to have that size that you implement or input in the front end but this width is only for the CSS. It is simply going to shrink down your canvas, um, but the canvas itself and the image, when you right click and press save, is gonna be the correct width and height. So if I was to refresh this now, we see we get this, uh, this black outline for our container. So we're gonna stop with the HTML and jump right into the JavaScript and get the core code written for um, the actual wallpaper generation. So. The first step here is going to be to get a reference to that wallpaper canvas element. So we can say here const wallpaper equal to document.query selector, then select the elements with the class of wallpaper, just like that. And then hopping down here, let's create a new function called render wallpaper. Okay. Now, this function is going to take in a couple of things. The first thing is going to be the canvas element itself. So in our case, it's going to be called wallpaper. So um, let's actually uh, provide a parameter here called canvas element. And like I just mentioned, when we call this function, we're going to pass in wallpaper as the first argument. The second argument here is going to be the start color on the linear gradient. So we can say here linear start color. Let's also say, or I might just use the American spelling for color. There we go. Let's also say linear end color, just like that, and also a radial color. So the goal of this function here is to simply take in the canvas element and then apply these three colors in the form of gradients. Okay. Now we can see here by accepting the canvas element as a parameter, we are not relying on the global scope to access the wallpaper function. 
makes the code a little bit more reusable and testable if you're going to test it. Okay, we've got this function. Now, when the page first loads up, let's simply render the wallpaper and pass in the wallpaper itself as well as a couple of those colors. So, I'm going to use the same colors that I showed you in the example. So, I'm going to go inside here and just say um, hash 00B3FF for the linear start color. We've also got hash 004A8F, uh, and we also have lastly here hash 8C00FF. Uh, so this right here is our starting code. When this function runs, we can now begin work inside here to make something visual on the screen. Now, before we actually write this function, I do want to do something quickly, and that is to add some JS doc. And this right here is going to help us, especially when dealing with the canvas element. So doing forward slash, then two asterisks in VS Code, then pressing enter, it's going to generate your JS doc documentation. Uh, let's now remove this first line and jump into the param section. And let's make the type for the first parameter be HTML canvas element. And for the bottom three, we're going to, of course, make them uh, string, okay? So now we can see here, if I was to try to say canvas elements dot, I can now call the get context uh, method in VS Code using the autocomplete feature. And that, of course, was not possible without something like TypeScript or using JS doc. So that's why we're using JS doc there to, of course, get our type hints. So let's actually do some code now. So let's make a new constant called context for the 2D rendering context of the canvas element. We can say here canvas elements dot get context then pass through here 2D. Now another bonus of using the JS doc is VS Code also knows that context is of type canvas rendering context 2D. So I can say context dot and get those, um, those suggestions as well. So that's perfect, right? So we have the 2D rendering context. This is so we can actually draw on the canvas. Uh, let's also get the width and the height for the canvas itself. So we're gonna say here, const width equal to canvas element dot width and const height equal to canvas element dot height. Now, this is simply gonna grab the set width and height from the canvas element. If I go back inside the index HTML here, I'm just going to set a width of uh, 1280 and a height of 720. In fact, I might just change this to be uh, 1920 by 1080 just for consistency. So now essentially we have 1920 and 1080 inside width and height respectively, okay? Now, we have the width and height. Essentially, the linear gradient in the background, so the primary, you know, left to right linear gradient, that is going to be based on the width and height of the canvas because when you're creating gradients using canvas, uh, you need to provide a width and height and an X and Y um, for you know all the different corners of the gradient. So that's why we need to get the width and height here so we know how big to make the gradient. So speaking of that, we do actually need to have a separate function here which is responsible for generating um, or building the linear gradient itself. So just bear with me here. If I hop down to the bottom here and I say function build linear gradient, this function is going to take in the 2D rendering context, so CTX, as well as the width and the height of which we want to create the uh, gradient for. Now we can say return context dot and we can see here, once again, we don't get those suggestions. So using JS doc right up here, we can add that parameter type. And we can just say here for this one, canvas rendering context uh, 2D, just like that. And for the bottom two, just make this numeric and or number, should I say, and we should be fine. Cool. So now we can say context dot and get our suggestions for create linear gradient. So the gradient for the background is going to be in the top left corner and it's going to span the whole width and height of the canvas. So we can say here 0, 0 for the X and Y top left corner. Then the finishing X and Y is going to be the canvas width and the canvas height. So now we can call this function inside our main function. 
So we can say const linear gradient is equal to build linear gradient, then pass through here the context and the width and the height. And once again, we're making these functions de uh, deterministic, which means that we pass in these parameters or these arguments, and we're always going to get the same result every single time. And once again, it's not, it's, it's, it is not relying on any global scope. Okay, cool. So we have the linear gradient constant. Essentially, this here is going to give us a canvas gradient. And once we have this object here, we can then set colors on it. Because right now, we've only said the canvas is in the X, Y for the top left and the X, Y for the bottom right. But we, we are, of course, yet to add any colors in. So let's just save this, go back in the browser, refresh. And of course, nothing actually happens. So... I spent a lot of time there doing code. I just wanted to go back in the browser, just to, you know, just to sort of uh, demonstrate that uh, we're not we're not yet rendering anything. So we've got the foundations here. We can now begin to actually add some colors in and make something appear on the uh, you know index HTML page in the browser. So going back inside VS Code here, we can now say uh, linear gradient, okay, dot add color stop, okay. Let's say here for zero, then say linear start color and also say add color stop once again for one, then say linear end color. So what is this zero and one? Zero means what is the color of the gradient at the beginning of the gradient? So in other words, in this case here at zero, zero in the top left corner, what's the gradient's color? It's going to be the linear start color. Okay. Now, for the one, what is the gradient color? At the end of the gradient, the linear end color. So between zero and one is our stops on the gradient scale, okay? You can think of this like 0% and 100%. So now we have the colors set. Let's now say context.fill style is equal to, then say linear gradient. So that is how we're able to set gradients as the fill. So now we can use context.fill rect, then say here in the top left corner, zero, zero, then say width and height to make that fill span the entire width and height. To keep things simple, we're making our gradient, the whole width and height, as well as the actual fill itself of that gradient, the whole width and height. I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here. I apologize, it took a bit of time to see some results, but that is typically the nature of interacting with the canvas directly because you need to set up all these functions if you're doing it like this. You also need to have your, um, you know, your methods like add color stop, your fill rect and so on. So we got there eventually, we have some progress on the screen. Now, we are of course gonna be adding these input fields at, um, at the very end, but the core code is still in progress. So let's move on now to adding that radial gradient on the right side. So this is where it's gonna get a little bit more complicated because we need to make it appear in a random location, but make it stick to the right side because typically, um, you know, your wallpaper on your computer, you're probably gonna have a bunch of icons in the top left corner, then your, you know, your, your right side might be blank. So in order to accommodate that typical usage of a screen, we're gonna be having our little detail of the circle on the right side. So let's go back inside here now and work on that. So how do we get a random uh, X and Y for the radial gradient? Well, it's very straightforward. Let's hop right down here and make a new function called um, get uh, random number. Now, this is gonna take in a minimum and a maximum. Let's say min and then max. Now for this, we're gonna simply say return math.floor, then say math.random times, uh, then say max subtract min, then say plus one plus the min. So essentially, oh, let's uh, spell this correctly, so math.random. Essentially, this piece of code here is gonna take in a min and a max, it's going to generate a random number between the minimum and the maximum inclusive, okay? 
So you so if you pass in 10 and 15, you're going to get either 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 or 15 as your numbers. So that's our function there. And we're going to be utilizing this to, of course, get, uh, give us a random X and Y for the radial gradient. So hopping right back up here, let's make a second build gradient function. This one for the radial gradient. Let's copy all of this here and duplicate it down using shift alt and the down arrow. Then we can say build radial gradient and all of these parameters are going to stay exactly the same. But in the context here, it's now going to be create radial gradient just like that. Now the radial gradient uh, function right down here is going to take in a couple of different arguments. So it's going to take in an X and Y for um, your initial uh, gradient uh, circle because when you have a radial gradient, you define an inner and outer circle. In our case, the inner circle is going to have the same X and Y as the outer circle. So those two values are going to be the exact same. But let's just move on here and actually uh, set up this function call. So let's say here for the radial gradient, we are going to say X, Y, 0, then X, Y, and then size. So these are yet to be defined. But... We have the X and Y being passed in. We have zero as the size of the inner gradient or inner circle. X and Y as the outer circle X and Y. And we have the size as the outer circle size. So let's define these uh, variables right now. So hopping right up here, let's say const X is going to be equal to then use that random number function. Going to say here, get random number width times 0.75 okay then as the max the width so for the x we want it to be on the right side if the width value is 1920 like it is right now we're saying here width times 0.75 so if i go back in the browser here and just do console log 1920 times uh, 0.75 we get 1440. So we're saying essentially get random number between 1440 and 1920. And that of course is going to land us on the last quarter of the x axis here. So in this last section right there, 1440 and beyond. Okay. Now, as for the height or the y axis, we can say const y. And the y is going to be a little bit different, it's actually going to be between the second and third octet of the y-axis. So we'll say here uh, height times 0.25, then height times 0.75 as the max value. So now, of course, it's going to be between about 0.25 right there and then 0.75 right down here. So we have this section to play with, right? Cool. So we have the x and y defined. As for the size, it's simply going to be calculated based on the width of the canvas. So we'll say here size equal to, then say uh, width divided by 2. So now we have the build radial gradient function. Let's call it within our render wallpaper. Let's hop down here and say radial gradients, okay, equal to, let's try, uh, let's try again, Radial gradient equal to build radial gradient. Once again, passing in all the same arguments. Okay, cool. So now let's add that color to our radial gradient. Let's hop down here and say radial gradient dot uh, add color stop for zero being the radial color. Now, as for the second color stop for the radial gradient, it's going to be transparent because we want the background to, of course, be see-through, um, you know, for the color to be exposed, right? So we can say here as the second stop, transparent just like that. Okay, cool. So now we can simply duplicate the context fill style and fill rect to be the radial gradient just like this, and that's all we need to do. If I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, we get that circle or that radial gradient at a random location between 
um, you know, we have our 0.25 and 0.75 here for the Y, and of course 0.75 and beyond for the X axis. So we have that radial gradient being rendered. And that is basically all we need to do when it comes to the core code of the render wallpaper function. So how do we now make it work with all the input fields? So we need to actually uh, put those input fields on the HTML first. So going back inside the HTML file, let's now use a table to represent or to lay out our input field. So let's hop down here and just say table with a class of controls. Okay, so controls of course being the controls for the wallpaper. Then we can say a new table row and do TD with a width as the label. Then as the value, we're going to say input with a type of number. And this here is going to, uh, to have a class of input dash width with a value of 1920 by default. If you like, you can use JavaScript to get the current screen size and inject that manually. But to keep it simple here, I'm just gonna make it 1920. And if I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, we get this right here. Let's do the exact same thing for the height. So duplicate that, then say height, and then say input dash height with a default of 1080. Let's also make a third TR. This one here is going to be for the linear start color. And the input type is now gonna to change to be color as opposed to number. And the class is gonna be input linear uh, start color. And a value of your choice, I'm gonna use the same colors that I previously have mentioned a couple of times and inject that right there and get rid of that PX. Let's do the exact same thing now for the linear end color. End right here linear end and the color is going to be this one here copy and paste that and lastly for the input fields a radial color and the radial color gonna have an input dash radial color as the class name then a value of um, this copy and paste right there I'll save this go back in the browser refresh and we get this right here now hopping down to the last uh, table row here it's gonna be a single uh, table data cell with a button inside of it. So I'll say here a button with a type of button to uh, to ensure there's no accidental form submissions if you have any. It's going to have a class here of btn generate wallpaper and a label of generate wallpaper. Very uh, self-explanatory there. Save this, refresh and we get this here. So heading up into the CSS, let's just real quickly add some styles. We're gonna say controls, then uh, target the table data cells to be a padding of five pixels. Make it look a little bit nicer on a refresh. There we go. And now hopping back into the main.js, let's change how we, uh, how we call this render wallpaper function. So let's actually go and remove this line, then hop to the top of this file here then make a new function called render wallpaper from input. Okay. Now we're going to leave it blank just for now, but hopping under the wallpaper constant, we need to now fetch all of those input fields in the JavaScript. So I'll say here const input width equal to document dot query selector, then pass through here the class of input dash width and do the exact same thing for the height. Okay, just like that. And continuing on here, we have the input linear start color with a class name of input linear start color. Okay, there we go. And a uh, input linear end color, just like that. And a input radial color. And we have input radial color. And then lastly, of course, our btn generate wallpaper with a class of uh, btn dash generate dash wallpaper. So now within this uh, render wallpaper from input function, this one here is going to be accessing global variables to make it simple. Now within here, we're going to say render wallpaper, then pass through here the wallpaper canvas element like we did previously. The second argument is now going to come from the input field itself. So we're going to say here input linear start color dot 
value. Then input linear end color dot value. Then lastly, input radial color dot value. Just like that, right? So we have all of those uh, arguments being passed in. I'll just hop down on the second line here to make it easier to read. Something like that should do us just fine. Okay, so we have all of those arguments being passed into the render wallpaper function. But there is one thing we missed, and that of course is the width and height. So we can say wallpaper.width is equal to input width.value. Then wallpaper.height is equal to input height.value. Of course, grabbing the width and height from the input fields themselves. So now, of course, if I was to save this, go back in the browser, refresh, and if I was to change this color to be red as an example and the ends to be a, a green, if I now call render wallpaper from input and press enter, it's going to render it just like that. Do it again, and it makes a second or third one. So now, of course, we need to simply bind this function to the button itself. So hopping right up here, we can say btn generates wallpaper dot add event listener. When the button gets clicked on, we're going to say render wallpaper from input. And also on page load, we need to call the function uh, immediately. If we don't, I'll save this, go back in the browser, refresh, it's going to be blank. I can press the button though. So on a refresh, it's blank. If I go back inside here and just say, you know, render the wallpaper from input and I save it on page load, it of course is now going to actually render it out for the user. So that right there is how to build a wallpaper generator using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next video.